Let's look at one more example of Thevenin and equivalent circuits in the frequency domain. And this one has a couple of interesting features about it that's worth showing as an example. So in this case, you're given a circuit like this and you're say, asked to find the Thevenin and equivalent circuit. All right, so in this case, we're going to apply the standard technique, open circuit voltage, then find the Thevenin and equivalent impedance between A and B. So in this case, I'm gonna ground the bottom node. I want to find VOC, so this node voltage becomes equal to VOC. And in this case, this is 100 at zero degrees volts is just equal to 100 volts, which is, means that's a defined node. And 100 at 90 degrees, well, 100 at 90 degrees means that's equal to 100 times cosine 90 degrees plus J 100 times sine of 90 degrees. And cosine 90 degrees is zero and sine of 90 degrees is equal to one. And so this is equal to J 100 volts. And so I've got J 100 here. That's a defined node. So looking at this, if that node is defined and that node is defined, I really only need a, a, a KCL equation at this node. And so in this case, to find VOC, I'll pick directions here and here. And what I've got is that in this case, VOC, to find that, I will have that J100 excuse me, I've got, oh, excuse me, one, I'm sorry, 100 minus VOC divided by minus J300 must be equal to VOC minus J100 divided by J100. So now I solve for this, one equation, one unknown, and what I will get is that VOC, which is equal to VTH, must be equal to minus 50 plus J 150 volts, which is equal to 158.1 at a phase angle of 108.43 degrees volts. So there's your Thevenin equivalent voltage. Now let's look at our Thevenin equivalent impedance. So if I zero out these two voltage sources, I wind up with this. So I want to find my equivalent impedance between nodes A and B, which will just be equal to my Thevenin impedance. And so in this case, I've got 200 ohms, but we note the 200 ohms is shorted on both sides. So in this case, the 200 ohm resistor is in parallel with what is effectively a zero ohm resistor and so 200 in parallel with zero is equal to zero ohms. And so if I redraw this, this is just a wire. So that eliminates that. And now what I've got left is I've got a minus J 300 ohm and a J100 ohm impedance. And these are both clearly in parallel, and so therefore ZTH will just be equal to J100 in parallel with minus J300, which is equal to J100 times minus J300 divided by J100 minus J300. And if you plug in the numbers, you get J150 ohms. And there's your Thevenin equivalent impedance. So what you've really got left over then 
is this, your Thevenin equivalent circuit looks like a voltage source which is minus 50 plus J 150 volts in series with just an inductor. There's no real part to this, so all we have is J 150 ohms. And there's our Thevenin equivalent circuit. So, a couple of points. We can use element reduction instead of source driving if there are no dependent sources, just as we did with, the other, with, our, with our time domain Thevenin equivalent problems. So we can do that. And also it's possible to get a Thevenin equivalent impedance which contains no real part or no imaginary part. So don't assume that just because we are in the frequency domain there's always going to be a real part and always an imaginary part. It's possible you can get a problem where the impedance is all real, all negative, or even equal to zero depending upon where you pull your A and B terminals out to find your Thevenin equivalent. So just a nice little extra example just to point out a couple of these of the, you know, more subtle aspects of doing this type of analysis.